victory is mine. For it is I who has remained unscathed and profitable in yet another week of trading. All right, sorry for the drama there on the intro, but hey, what am I going to do? It's been a good week of trading. It's a Friday. I'm burnt to a crisp. I'm ready for the weekend to start, so I thought I'd throw in a little bit of comedy. I want to welcome everybody to Stock Market Mutterings for October 5th, where I'll do my best to try to find you some quality trade setups, and we'll talk about some of the trades that we made. Now, as I said, it's been a good week of trading. But it's not so much about the money this week. That's always nice. I appreciate that. That's great. We love money. But it's more about how I think we traded in the room, especially with how the market turned there towards the end of the week. If you remember, I just started doing these market mutterings daily on Monday. And one of the things I started out with saying back then was I wanted to focus more on my execution prices, being a little bit more patient about my initial entry. And I think I've done a good job of that. Again, profit's profit, but I, it's always to me more about how you traded because if you do the right things and you trade well, remember idea execution management, if you have good discipline and you follow those three steps and you trade well, trade by trade, the money will make up for itself. So I'm more proud, I think, the way we traded considering the market was night and day, yin and yang from the beginning of the week to the end of the week. So let's talk about that. We'll talk a little bit about the market first, then we'll talk about some of the trades that you're seeing there on screen as well. So this market looked like right there on, on Wednesday, we were going to break out. Hell, the Dow was ripping to all-time highs. Stuff, the Dow components like BA, those things were just going ballistic. And this thing was breaking. Let me put the spy. I actually got Apple up there. Right here on Wednesday, it had just cleared shorter term resistance from early October. And it looked like it, there, there was nothing in its way to stop it from going up to 920 highs, which was 294, just, just under 294. And like I said, the Dow was already ripping up there. The rest of them were strong. And then all of a sudden it just starts to fade a little bit. Doesn't look like much on Wednesday, but then Thursday it really digs in its heels and you get a monstrous sell off. Now, yesterday we talked about this because it got down into the 50 moving average, which is a pretty important level. And it hasn't been at the 50 moving average. If you go back here, I'll show you. It hasn't been back to the 50 moving average since the 3rd of July. So it's, that, that's, that's quite a bit of time. And as we always say, support resistance, these levels are important. And the further that you go back into time, the more relevant they are and the more important that they are. So you're going back to you know July. That's, that's important. That's an important level there. And it's one that needs to be watched. But yesterday it fought off of that number. Today it just rolled right through it like it wasn't even there. Now, for the bull's case in this, it did manage to claw its way back up and close just slightly above that 50 moving average. So as we move forward, that's what we really got to take a look at. Because the last time it busted through the 50 with authority, if you remember back in February, we went straight down to the 200. Now, I'm not going to say that's going to be the, the situation here, but hell, the 200 moving average is 275. I think more importantly, you'll probably, if you do go lower, you'll be looking at that 280, which hell, we talked about that. I mean, it seemed like forever back in July. Is this market ever going to break 280? Ever going to break 280? You know, you might end up trading back down there. So this is something that we're going to have to look at. I mean, it was a pretty thick, thick piece of selling both Thursday and Friday. And interesting enough, if you draw your attention to the upper chart here, interesting enough, this is Thursday and Friday. It's kind of like the same chart. I mean, it starts out, it fades all the way just past lunch. This is 11 o'clock in the morning in Pacific time. I'm in California, so this would be 2 o'clock for the East Coasters. But just fades down in there until about the 11 o'clock hour, then bounces to the close. Kind of the same thing today. Sells off right from the open. Tried to bounce a little bit there from the payroll numbers. Then it sells all the way down just slightly after lunch and then rallies. So the trade has been, if you could see the future, is like, you know, sleep in, buy the market after lunch, and then, and then sell it at the close. You'd have done fantastic with that with that trade, but if we all knew that, right? So I don't know if that's going to continue on, but just going forward, you know, to me, it doesn't really matter what it does. I'll trade accordingly. But if you're looking at stuff down, you got to be thinking this 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 lower area here has got to hold up. Is 285s. Otherwise, there's just really not much underneath of that until you start getting to 280. And it could get a little bit more aggressive. You had some good news on there. And like I said, a pretty abrupt turn. So it's going to have to wash itself out for the week. Probably going to see a little bit more volatility in some of the names that you trade. It usually happens in situations like this. So let's talk about those things that we did trade and some of those setups. Definitely the workhorse for me 
this week was Apple. I had some options. I did sold some puts and stuff like that to pick up some cash. And that breakout worked really good on, on Tuesday and Wednesday. Now, it did sell off pretty good there this last couple of days. Now, I did try to, to bounce this thing today. I saw early on the morning, you'll, you'll see, you probably saw that on my brokerage statement. It was the first trade I took today. And I was looking for that pre-market rip, taking out pre-market highs. If you remember, that's the same trade we did yesterday on Amron. I like that trade. And I saw Facebook being green, ripping. I saw Nvidia taking off. I saw a lot of these others. So I thought there was going to be a brief morning spike. And I took that trade. It didn't work out. But the problem with it is I had to go so low in, in share size. It was okay. But you had to go so low in share size for me on this one because the volatility was so bad on these. These candles were moving around 70, 80 cents at a time. And that's huge for Apple. I mean, this stock only moves like a buck 50. I mean, now it's got volatility, which it hardly ever has. And at the time, I was pretty pissy about it because I felt that I rushed that trade a little bit. Knowing the market climate and environment, I probably should have waited. So I was kind of pissy about it. And, and this is how you feel sometimes. And then you take the loss. And then later on, you look back and go, man, it's a damn good thing I did because this thing ended up, you know, I think I bailed out somewhere in the 226s. And I was like, holy shit. Thing went all the way down to, it was in the 220s. And I guess $6 fade on Apple. Wow. I mean, yeah, it got, it got out of control. But I mean, that's the way it is sometimes. And this is what we do as, as traders and how we have to have to think. You know, sometimes we'll make mistakes. We will rush things. Like I said, you want to pay attention to your execution, but sometimes we do things and we, we make a little mistake. The quicker you realize that, the better off you are. You just say, look, I know what I did wrong. It's okay. And I got out of it as quickly as possible. Save myself a, a ton of money. So again, I traded really well. I did force a couple of things I thought there on Friday in a choppy market but my position size was so low that I was okay with it. Then I tried this, once everything started fading, I went to Facebook because it was the only one left that was green in like the fang names. Everybody else was just getting shellacked. And you know, I was just looking for a bounce. So when it made this bounce here, I started into a, a short position. You'll see the, the trade there on the screen. And that was, again, it wasn't really a setup I normally take and when you're looking at a range it was only up a buck or so at the time that wasn't a whole lot but you sometimes run into these unique scenarios where like you know the market just won't stop selling off I mean yes oversold but it's not stopping anybody from continuing to sell and as we've been talking about this whole week that fear is more powerful than greed and that's what people do they'll panic and they'll sell and these things were getting out of control, so I put some money on that, and that turned out to be a $2 winner per share, so that was nice. That was really nice and kind of turned the whole day around for me there. It just felt like that was gonna that was more of a common sense trade than a technical analysis trade. It just felt like, look, this market's just gonna roll over. And then late in the day, I thought we might get a little bounce, and I, I went to NVIDIA, and I tried to pick this thing up, but and the, by the end of the day, it was like, I don't think anybody's going to want to hold positions over the weekend, especially after the last two days. That's a sketchy. So again, the week was really good. I probably, if I could go back and do anything differently, I would not have taken this NVIDIA trade late in the day. I just think I'd already, already been up well for the week. I didn't need to mess around with something that was only going to make me a couple of hundred bucks at the best. And, and in turn, I lost a couple of hundred bucks. So I was like, eh, I probably should have just left that alone. I might be guilty. I am guilty as charged for possibly trying to make something happen late on a Friday to put one more piece of dollar in my pocket. I could be guilty of that, but that's okay. Sometimes we do that, I'm aware of it, and I'm discussing this openly with you. So other than that, I think it was a good week. Definitely, like I said, Apple was a really good winner for us this week, and Amron there from yesterday was pretty solid. And Monday definitely being the biggest, biggest day with a couple of nice trades there on NVIDIA. So now as we go forward, the thing has to be, you know, what what's the best kind of look here? I've got to think this Netflix has some has some interest to me if it really gets dirty at the beginning of the week. Like let's say my first scenario thought here is this. I'm thinking about stupid panic on Monday. I don't know if we're going to get it. But if that's the first move, a gap down and some selling, 
because there's a chance this market may want to test the 50 moving, 200 moving average. You start pulling up a lot of these charts, you're going to see the 200 moving average isn't so far away. I mean, at one point, this, this Netflix was down almost 20 bucks today. And I don't think Netflix has been down $20 on a day, non-earnings related, and who knows. But anyway, if it's able to flush down there around the two, you can see I got alert down close to it, 327s, I think I would buy it. I know it seems like it's far away right now, but you know, you could have said that this morning when it was at 360 and going, if it flushes to 340, well, it got pretty damn close. But if we happen to go down 10, 15 bucks starting out Monday, I'd be interested in bouncing this. Now, I know they got earnings coming up soon. I know they didn't do so well on their last earnings. I'm not, you know, I'm not investing in this company, but I think there's a bounce potential there. And then I would do the same with Nvidia because I thought Nvidia held up pretty good considering everybody else was minus 20 and it was minus 10. And it, pretty much this thing just gave back all of its upgrade. I mean, it gets upgraded and it rips from you know, 266 to 289 and it gave it all back in four days. I mean, it's just four straight down days and it just touched its 50 moving average. So this is very big support right here where it sits in Nvidia. So when I'm looking at the two, you know, Netflix doesn't, it has daily chart support, but it's a little bit far away. My trade on Netflix would be an open flush, a sell down, and then a buy. NVIDIA for me would be if it's able to stabilize around this. This was also support from later part of September. You see you got a couple of bottoms right here at 266. So if the 266 area, 265 is able to hold, I think this is also a long. So there might be a mini flush into that number since it closed around 270. I kind of like those. Now on the flip side of this, every single one of these, Apple, Facebook, Netflix, NVIDIA. These things take off first thing Monday, you know? I gotta think, you, you gotta be looking at the short side. You've gotta be thinking they may lose their faith. That would be the trade for me at that, that point. Now I know that sometimes they can put in these all day bounces. You'll have to really look at the intraday charts and pick the right kind of spots. But to me, that just seems, you know, like, like Facebook trade today, it just doesn't seem like they're going to stick. I mean, there's a lot of technical damage done on these charts. This isn't, it wasn't just like a light volume pullback or a small off day for these things. These things, you use them in trade at 2 to $3 range, and all of a sudden they smack the hell out of people for $15 or $16. You're going to get panic, and you've got that in these charts. I mean, look at the exaggerated candles on this in, in video. I mean, this is monstrous. Like I said, at one point, Apple being down 7 bucks. You know, Apple misses earnings and doesn't go down $7. I mean, it's been a long time before you've seen that kind of correction in there. So don't underestimate that you might get more of that. And also on the same token, don't be delusional that the bounces you see are the first pieces of green that you see on these charts. Like, okay, everything's back to normal. BTFD, we're all good. This is a bull market. You know, be careful about those first initial bounces because I still think when the market opens on Monday, you're gonna to have to give a good 30 minutes for some solid digestion before you can get this really clear picture. You might be able to make some good trades within that first half hour that could be nice trades, but you know, you're gonna to have to get a little bit of data to compile before you can say, oh yeah, okay, we've reached a bottom. We, we don't know that yet, or you know, what kind of trades are, are setting up the best. So a lot, a lot of questions shall be answered in just a few days, be patient. In the meantime, enjoy your damn weekend. I mean, enjoy it. You can't be sitting there trading stocks forever, looking at freaking charts and stuff. That's uh, that's nice, but you know we gotta have a life too. So I want you to get out there. You want you to have a good weekend. I want you to click on that trade room tab and come trade with us live because we've been doing really good. We made some good money both to the long and the short side. And we're really good at finding opportunities on the fly there. We got a great room and a great community. So join us if you need some help. Other than that, I want to thank you for your support of this video by watching and your support of the channel. As always, if you need help, you can always reach out to me at support at the Thanks for watching. Take care. Trade well. Talk to you soon.